it is a really satisfying main event for me um mostly based on riding the hype or following the story of leon edwards i i can't think of any professional athlete who covid19 has treated worse first he has his matchup against former champion tyron woodley taken away which was supposed to happen in late march of last year in england that falls off because of covid at the time they can't really book the rematch so woodley ends up fighting burns and covington and by the time he's lost 10 straight rounds to those two there's zero hype excitement or potential on his name or anything to be gained so that title shot that he certainly would have gotten after almost certainly beating Woodley. In fact, I can say really in hindsight, he absolutely would have decimated Tyron Woodley. Uh, Gilbert Burns gets his title shot. Instead, we saw how that turned out. Men, he's he's feeling a bit sulky. Like he, He's got to be so frustrated that he can't get that Masvidal fight after Masvidal like sucker punched him in the gut backstage and it's on camera because that could draw huge eyeballs, have a ton of drama, and Masvidal just wants none of it. Colby Covington just wants none of him. He feels like he's on this eight-fight win streak. He's a top dog. He doesn't need to take bottom guys. It's his turn at the top, and the UFC drops him out of the rankings for inactivity. And uh, he kind of has a realization, hey, I, I don't like the situation I'm in. I need to keep fighting, love it or hate it. He <laughs> says, fuck it, I'll fight Kamzat Chemaev, the UFC's golden hype boy, and magically regains his ranking. And he has this opportunity to have this fight with a ton of eyeballs in him and gain a ton of hype and momentum. And then COVID gets this fight canceled three times, first with Edwards catching it, second with Kamzat catching it, and third with long-term effects taking Chimeyev out of the fight game for who knows how long, potentially forever. So Edwards finally finds himself in the situation where he has a new opponent. He's in a main event. He's going to be fighting for the first time in almost two years he last fought i think july of 2019 and i'm excited he's he's a real mixed martial arts virtuoso the the only frustrating thing about his game is he doesn't chase the finish when he has it on the feet he but he is i think underrated in how much damage he dishes out it his game it really starts with his defense. He's very composed. He has this minimal, efficient movement. And what that seems to let him do is stay incredibly aware of his opponent and what they're offering him and get the guard up and get out of the way of almost all the shots that come to him. And then he builds this beautiful counter striking off that at range. He has one of the filthiest one-two counters I've seen just so crisp so smooth so clean so quick uh he just head snapping back and then when it gets close he's for sure i think the most vicious fighter in the clinch his the way he just manages to always find a way to land an elbow off the break is so filthy and so vicious like he, he looks so safe and uh, defensive out at open range and then it's like he's holding back all that like vin vicious i'm gonna make you bleed energy for those moments in the clinch because the there's you could just make like a 30 second montage of him barraging opponents with elbows off the clinch but it's not just elbows he's really creative he'll find a way to frame off and mix the knee if they're too worried about the elbows i've seen him step out with a high kick um sort of related i've seen he had like uh rda on the ground in the first round and found an angle to just throw like a knee into the solar plexus while rda was kind of prone with his back like half against the cage um so really like creative violent striking in close i love that part of edward's game um when he gets his opponent hurt on the ground he goes after it but again like watching the cowboy fight watching the ed uh, rda fight he, it looks like he really rocks and wobbles his opponents and just doesn't he doesn't pursue he doesn't have that finishing like 
instinct on the feet when they get that deer in the headlights look so that would be the one knock i have on his offense in terms of defense uh rda did manage to land some leg kicks that was really the only thing he got going during their fight um it being a southpaw versus southpaw matchup you sometimes see that more like southpaw is just don't have as much experience dealing with the outside power leg kick uh, coming from other southpaws uh it didn't compromise him it didn't really affect him it's just something i noticed rda landing a lot so and i think a consequence of that defensive style i was describing where he's very still and minimalist it makes it easy to get out of the way of head strikes but not as easy to uh jump back on the leg kicks but he does tend to adopt like a muay thai stance where he gets light on that lead leg and keeps the hands up and he did you did see him like tapping that leg a lot in the later rounds against rda so again i think this guy is just such a mixed martial arts virtuoso i and he uh i do think he's so flexible that if, as soon as he gets in the leg kick trouble i kind of expect him to have an answer on to his opponent, Bilal Muhammad. Uh, coming off a quick turnaround for him. He just fought in early February, late January. I, I remember telling you about this fight not too long ago. And this is a guy who's been very consistent in his career at beating all the middling prospects and then falling against top guys. You look, he was just here at not that long ago, riding a four-fight win streak. He went up against the then underrated Jeff Neal and lost pretty decisively. Turned back the clock. That four fight win streak started after a knockout loss to Vincente Luque. So this is a guy who's managed to get done against most of the division, but every time he goes against one of those real top dogs, tends to lose. Um, he's at his best when he is busy. He can do that off the front and back foot which is very impressive the fight against Lyman Good he did this amazing job of moving backwards the whole time but still being the busier more active fighter which you don't see a ton of rounds one like almost entirely off the back foot and but he's at his best I think when he's moving forward um, you saw that against Diego Lima just a clinic and pressure always moving forward mixing in the grappling just to give him something to think about a uh, fantastic jab to interrupt the offense and some slick combos uh, that's really his bread and butter those like two three punch combos he'll start it with a jab find a hook get your guard up high and like mix in some rips to the body also interestingly enough kind of vulnerable to the leg kicks in that last fight against lima so I'm curious to see which, if either fighter tries to capitalize on that. Uh, the other thing with Bilal Muhammad's game, I wanted to say, is just willpower. This guy, in his last two fights especially, Lyman Good hurt him in the third round, and Muhammad just like kicked it into another gear to like jump into that grappling and stay safe for the rest of the fight he tried to take good down a couple times in the earlier rounds hadn't gotten it but after uh good like lay into that him with that hook uh, muhammad just kicked it into another gear and stayed so busy that he stayed out of danger for most of the rest of the round similarly in that lima fight lima was landing those leg kicks all night even though he wasn't landing anything else with them but you see sometimes those just turn the fight around but you didn't see any indication of that in that fight so just the willpower of Bilal muhammad he manages to just kind of rise above whatever adversity is afflicting him in the octagon and carry on and look relatively unaffected uh his defense like kind of contrary to edwards is really based off his movement he just like i said it fits him he stays very busy and uses his legs to get out of the way of most of the strikes not so much head movement and i think that kind of 
spirals into the biggest hole in his defense which seems to be hooks that that seems to be the strike that always gets him that's what Luke knocked him out with that's what Lyman Good like gave him trouble with in the third round and caught him with that's what Jeff Neal caught him with multiple times so when you talk about this matchup stylistically you have a guy who likes to counter strike likes to stay kind of still likes to let the opponent throw at him and then counter particularly with straights versus a guy who likes to stay busy likes to throw a lot likes to move forward and try and drown opponents in pressure so i'm thinking this is kind of going to be a classic bull versus matador fight i'm really curious to see uh how the counter striking of edwards is going to match up and what kind of improvements changes he's going to have made to his game over this last year and a half he's had three fight camps he has this chip on his shoulder he's not happy with where he's at he needs to go out and make a statement and i imagine he must be a heavy betting favorite and it's well well deserved i personally think this is going to be one of those there's levels to this game fight and we're probably not going to see muhammad rise to the level and lose again to one of those truly elite opponents but i'm i'm really hoping to see leon edwards put on a showcase and just show what an excellent fighter he is because i think muhammad that bull style of fighting is the perfect canvas for edwards to put on a performance but i will be happy to eat my words if uh Bilal Muhammad shocks me and potentially the world and it would be a great story if it's like he's knocked on this door time and time again and this is his opportunity where he finally transcends that level and reaches the elite groupings either way I'll have a storyline coming out this could potentially determine like the next title challenger in the welterweight division because guys like Masvidal and Covington just don't seem that interested in fighting so underrated main event I would say really looking forward to it